Good evening, Gavin. Good evening, TC. Welcome all to Terry Curran's Football Podcast. How are you, TC? What kind of summer have you had, mate? Where are you, Sandra? You're in a pub. No, I've just packed myself a cup of tea before we start. You're in the kitchen, ain't you? Yeah, I've just put your milk away. You are a domestic I'm god. Gonna stir the, I'm going to stir the cup, as you can hear, and then I'm going to sit down. So, how do you make your cup of tea, then, TC? Clearly, you boil your kettle I drink first. Tea. Yep. I drink tea like alcoholics drink beer. You used to drink Coke when you played football, yep. didn't you? So, yep. so has the tea since retirement replaced the no, Coke? No, I've always, I've always drank uh, lots of tea, always have. And I used to have three sugars in at one time a day. I'm down to half now. So what kind the last of, four or five years, whatever it is. What kind of tea do you have? Is there any specific tea? Is it like Yorkshire tea that you drink up there in? In Yorkshire. No, Catler's, um, I, I don't, I like it strong, but not like charcoal strong. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I do, yeah. So do you put it into... And I, and, and I get uh, fresh milk. I buy fresh milk. So, so what, I get bottled milk. So is it the blue top, your whole milk, or do you have semi skin? Yeah, I get, uh, yeah, it's fresh milk. I get, it's silver, but it's silver top. It's, it's fresh milk from farm. And do you put your tea bag straight into the cup, or do you put it into... Put it straight back. No, I have a teapot. But yep. it's only me who drinks it. The kids don't drink tea or coffee. Got yeah, yeah. So uh, even when people come, I put it. Even though I've got a teapot, I, I just put it into to, um, cup. Let it stew for about well, stir, stir it with spoon. A couple of well, not a couple of minutes, three or four seconds, five, five seconds. Make, make it a little strong. But I like plenty milking, so. So do you put your milk in after? After yeah. Oh, I can't. It, it drives yeah. me out to miss that point in before. Because there is a technique about everybody's different. We're making cups of tea, aren't they? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, this is a great insight to how Terry Curran makes a cup of tea. And I'm sure that the mug you have is a Terry Curran football podcast mug. Oh. As of well. course. Absolutely. TC, you're an absolute legend. You was on the pitch. You're a legend off it. Um, we always start with our magic I'm a fighter, moments. Gabby. I know you are, T. We all... <laughs> when I say a fighter, I'm a fighter for, for the right things. I know you are. I know you are. Um, we always start with our magic moments. The football season hasn't started yet, so we can't talk about magic moments from the Championship, League One and League Two. The Premier League, of course, kicks off the week after, and the Charity Shield is the curtain raiser. We're going to be talking about the Charity Shield a little bit later on in the podcast, but let's just briefly, while we're talking magic moments, talk about the Euros, because we were going to do one or two podcasts, but we were both so busy. My daughter got married. I've had loads of things on me, play, work, etc., etc., and we didn't actually cut one. But what was your magic moments of the uh, of the Euros, T? Well, there were one or two decent goals in there. Yeah, there you know. Um, what was the uh, the black lad who played for for Spain? Uh, for Spain. Oh yes, the uh, the, the fella, yeah, the winger that plays on the yeah. You know, um, I thought he was outstanding. Yeah. But the maturity for the young the young uh, Barcelona player. Yeah, on the other wing. You know, and uh, he scored a couple of unbelievable goals mm. uh, in the semi final. I mean, I'm disappointed in England, in the sense that um, we were med favourites, which you've got to listen. You've got to handle pressure. Yeah. But we never seem to handle pressure when it comes to these tournaments. Um, and I look at all the players we've had over the years, and it's not. It's not regardless of what anybody says. It's not the players' fault because if, if you can get the right balance of the team. Um, and get the right philosophy and show the players what's in that team. You will go a long, long way. And we've, what we've had two, two uh, finals of the what, European yeah, we have two, two, two Euro finals and a semi final of the World and Cup and a and World Cup final. final. Yeah, it's a semi final. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Um, we still haven't named anyone yet. It looks like Cars is going to take over for the um, 
for the qualifiers. Yeah, or... as in as in trim. We, it's nation leagues, uh, nation league games, isn't it? We're is a, it? on the seventh of September. We're away in Dublin, and then on the tenth, we're at home against uh, Finland. So we got the Republic well, of know, Ireland and Finland. You know as well as I do. Mm-hmm. Without being any anybody in football, yeah, could manage England and qualify. Hundred percent. And that's not been. I'm mm. being honest. I'm being honest. Yeah. And being constructively uh, trying to point out that we have whoever's the manager has got the best players to pick from in England. Mm. You didn't have to buy any players. No. No, they're all there for right? you. Yeah. The qualifiers, you'll find that that we always qualify now compared to what what used to happen before. It's because it's all because you, these you days. can be drawn against. You can yeah. be drawn against one of the. Uh, elite uh, Euro teams and you could be out of it. Absolutely. You know, whereas now, you know you're going to qualify mm-hmm. uh, and then and then you'll get all the people what are do good as I, as I want to call them saying, oh, you're going to, you straight away you're going to be uh, moaning. No, I don't moan and groan about England because I want England to win. Same I here. want an English coach to be successful. Yeah, I want to be proud of an English coach. Yeah. What's going to produce a, a footballing performance like Spain did? Mm-hmm. Yeah, in a final. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And they deserve they deserve to win it, right? So they were the best team in that tournament. I mean, you reference Nico Williams. And they beat all the best teams. Absolutely. Yeah, you reference Nico Williams. What a player he is. We've got players like Nico Williams. We've got players in in our squad that are very very good and comfortable on the ball. We've got one. We have got one. We didn't take. Well, exactly. I mean, I'm I'm hoping that it does look as though Lee Carsley. Is gonna be the the new interim manager. Um, England, the FA. Do you think he's gonna pick Jack Grealish? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Do yourself a favour, yeah. Gabby. I tell you what, you. I'm sure you're sleeping on a wall somewhere. Do you not think Lee Carsley will pick Jack? No. Really? No. Oh, okay. No. Oh, right. Okay. I guarantee. Listen, Gabby. You, I think I think you, Carsley will. Not, but what I'm trying to say to you is. Mm? They all sleep in the same bed. No, I, I, I do agree with you there. You know, you, there, there, there is an FA type of do. person. I'll tell you what he will do. Go on. He'll take someone out of the under 20, under 20. What's it, what, what groups he take? Under 21? Yeah, under 21. Under 23s, whatever. Under 21s at the moment, yeah. Right. That's what's going to come through. Mm-hmm. Uh, he'll fetch a couple of... Because they, they all want to fetch some of the own people in. And that's what he will do. I would be they amazed. The same bet. I agree. I've they, been they on these football to. courses, Gabby. I've seen what they yeah, do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why do you think they fail? Yeah, no, I, you know, I'm not disagreeing with you there. And too. I don't. I want them to be successful, mm-hmm. Gabby. But I, I, I would, really want them to be successful. I, I would. Do. I would be 100 percent amazed if Lee Carsley did not name Jack Grealish in his squad. I'd be well, amazed. Then, eh? Yeah, Shall absolutely. We we'll see and, who's right. And and again. With when we used to watch the under twenty ones, but they've all they, they've gone on now to iPlayer and stuff like that because we don't broadcast. I mean, we did win the what was it, the World Cup or the Euros, the under twenty ones, uh, but it wasn't being broadcast, um, largely because there is no broad TV rights to broadcast an under twenty ones tournament. Now they do find the money to broadcast the women's tournaments, but not the under twenty ones. It is a big gripe, and we have touched upon that on Listen, the podcast the, the, last season. Gabby, Gabby, all that is mm-hmm. to do with wokeness of, of of life. Well, I can't again. Right? I can't disagree. Why can't we? Mm-hmm. Why can't we? Why can't a manager, an English manager, mm-hmm. do what? Any other European team clubs do, mm. right? Look at Fodden or look at Jack Grealish. Yep. Mm. Right, Jack, go out and play. Yeah. Right. Mm. But work out in between that when we haven't got the ball. Hundred percent. Because I believe in you. Yeah, absolutely. Just, yeah. I mean, he, there's so much trust in it, and on a 16 year old kid. Mm. Yeah. I know he's nearly 17. I get that. Yeah, he's 17 now. Right. Yeah. How Gavin, Jack Grealish is petrified of making a mistake. He certainly changed his game as as we've talked he's many petri- times. Yeah, Gabby, I'll tell you, it is he's, he's petrified yeah. of making a mistake. I'm hoping that Jack has a big season next season, and I think he will come back good. I think he'll be one of the stars of the Premier League next season. But again, 
that's By just the way, I'm my not opinion. criticizing him. There's no, I know you're not. More than me. Absolutely, one hundred percent. To play, hundred percent, say, hundred percent. But I do, I do every think every football club I joined, every football club. Yeah. I tell you, let me tell you all now. Mm-hmm. Every football club I joined, mm-hmm. every one, right? Yeah. You have to walk in that dressing room mm-hmm. and show them that you up there. Yeah. You have to show them. Mm-hmm. Now, when I got when I went to Everton, there's some big players there. Yeah. Right, and I didn't play a lot at Everton, not because I weren't good enough to play. Mm. I got a bad injury, and the team went on to be successful. But when I joined Everton, they were second bottom at league, yeah, mm. or third, whatever it was. Mm. I mean, the, 11, 12,000 people, yeah. The, the mood in the dressing but room I went was in poor, there, yeah. I want the ball, give me the ball, no, absolutely. And then when I got it, I ran with the ball to go and beat people, yep. And everyone, when I joined Forest, they in second division. Mm. I was part of that team, that squad, what got them into first division. You were on the plane when they got promoted. Right. Yeah. Mm. I, they hadn't won for a month after, yeah. I, got, after I got injured. I mm. come back, they hadn't won for a month. i have been out for seven months. I mean, Martin does and say that. And I came that. back and scored one. Yeah. At Erifan. But every club I've been at, mm. my record, yeah. I have won more games than I've lost yeah. at every club I've been at. Absolutely, and, 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 and that's Pete, a fact. That, by the way, that. Peter Reid, Andy Gray, any of your former teammates, at Everton would back up what you've just said. And in Martin O'Neill's book, Martin does reference you and and, and talks about how valuable you were to that Nottingham Forest team. And it was it was John Robertson really that was doing the uh, the water carrying job. It was Terry Curran that was uh, making all the ground for Nottingham Forest. And when you got injured, but it, the wheels but it, didn't a, come off the wagon. It's a team. It's a team game, Mike. Hundred percent. My yeah. my uh, strengths were to run at people and, and, and cause havoc. Absolutely, right? Create oh God, did or you? score a goal. Yeah, yeah. Now Jack can do that if the manager gives him confidence. Again, hundred percent. And I'd like to see Guardiola play Jack more centrally in the middle of the park because for me, that's what Grealish is: is a central midfield player is not a winger and I've been saying that for years and years and years and hopefully both Guardiola and Carsley for how long he's got the gig if if he does get the gig will give Jack that confidence to go and play football his natural game and I think if Grealish does Do we've think, got one of the best players in the world. Do you think a number 10? No. I, right. I, you know me T I'm not a massive I, fan of Bellingham. I saw him as a kid. Yeah, against From Portsmouth. Birmingham, against Portsmouth. Playing yeah. Portsmouth. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I tell you, mm-hmm. he's not in the same league as Zidane. No, 100%. No way. Now, when, you, when I say that, I'm not, what I'm trying to say is, you know, give him another, what is it, 20? I'm sorry, D- D- Bellingham give could not lay. Like... When he gets to 23, then he could be... But he's not a number ten. No, but he couldn't lace. He couldn't lace Zidane's boots. He's nowhere right? near the ability of Zidane. Number 10, well, I'm not. not. I I never have. What he should have done? Mm. Well, take well, take Jack and play Jack in the ten. Hundred percent. Or play Foden in the ten. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, I, I'll tell you now, right? I, I mean, but ball hasn't been kicked in in La Liga. I I I think. This is going to be a massive season for Jude Bellingham. And I wouldn't be surprised if he didn't start many games this season because they've brought in some magnificent players. And I look at Bellingham, and I've said for a long, long time, I I don't see him in the light as most English football supporters see Bellingham. I think he's a good player, but I don't really know don't what Bellingham the, is. I'm not going to knock the fans because the fans get... No, hundred percent. The it's fans get yeah, but Gabby, get the fans get taken. Of course they the do. Media. Of course by they the do. Media, hundred percent. So if you ask any of those teams what were in that European Championship, yeah, 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 and you ask any of those them teams, hmm? how many players are you going to pick out of England on the way that they performed in the Euros? I wouldn't pick any of them. Well, obviously they're not. Yeah. They're not. I get, they might say. They might say Belling, They might say Bellingham. They probably would. The they, hang on, but they might. Yeah, I agree. Foden would walk into any team in that what were in that European champion. Again, I agree with you. With any with any yeah. other foreign coach. Yeah. Hundred percent. 
Absolutely 100%. On his, on his performances, none of the players would. But we know that them players are better than them performances. And largely because of an inept manager who was far too negative, suppressed the natural abilities of our footballers to go and play football on the front foot. And that's what I hope that Lee Carsley does. He certainly set his under-21s up in a positive manner. Do I, and let's do hope we, he can do that for the full team. Do I blame him? Or do I blame the committee? I blame I'm Seth sure, Gay. I'm sure, you know, who were I talking to? Oh, I was talking to Neil Redford the other day mm. to Doncaster Bell. Yeah, I saw some great, uh, some great. And he was talking too. about, and he was talking about uh, when he was managing Leeds, and the owners are telling him what to do, mm. and they had a player. And I heard about this from other yeah. people, mm. and he confirmed it. Yeah. Uh, if he played six more games, mm-hmm. they'd have to give him another contract. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he finished up putting him on uh, for the last 10 minutes and he scored two. He was telling me. Yeah, it happens all the time in I football. With I mean, if Tom, turn, wanted, Tom had named the player. It's littered. Football is littered. You go, well, why are they playing? It's probably something in his contract that if he does play a certain amount of minutes and games, they've got to pay him more money or got to pay the other club more yeah, money. But why put it in his contract? Because that's lying to the kid. Exactly. But that's what they do. No, I, Gabby, you can't much. tell me. Uh, yeah, no, I know I can't. You all. I know. Now you know what goes off in that dressing room. Yeah, no. Before you go out to play. I've seen it. Absolutely, T. And nothing ever changes. No, exactly. It, it, football, football is a corrupt business. So how, do, we blame, do we blame Southgate? Or do we blame... Mm. But I blame Southgate because I turn around and say to them, I'm on £5 million a year, sack me. Absolutely, I yeah. I don't mean that in a clever way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Mm. I'm going to go out with a bang. And what that bang is, I'm either going to be... An hero, or I'm not good enough. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what I would make sure I, I did. But I, I, I'd make sure that was an hero mm-hmm. and not a failure. 100%. And, and Gareth Southgate, again, on every big test he's had, he's, come up, he's come up short. On no, he's ev- failed. Yeah, he has. He's come up short on every big test. Test that he's Look had. Look how we got through. We were favourites to win it. Look how we got through to a final. Both both draws that we had, it was almost a free. Who did we really play? No one. We didn't in the World Cup. Oh, by we didn't the way, in the Euros. those teams, those teams that we played, we had to come back, come, come from behind. I think twice. Of course, of course, we did because of the way he sets us up and the way he's so far too negative. Gareth Southgate has been getting away with it for about six years. At least six years. We're all talking about him being man. man listen, if he'd have been, man, I'd have been man, prime minister of this country. Yeah, if you, we so he got Man United's job. To, to be fair, I think you would make a good prime minister if I'm absolutely honest, and I think you would make a better Man United. Uh, manager than Gareth Southgate and I do believe if Gareth Southgate was given the manager's job of Manchester United in August I don't think he'd see Christmas because I think you'd have an absolute revolt by the United fans on his boring and negative way that he sets his Christmas. teams up to play football I'd give him a month well he, well, probably... he wouldn't have got a job anyway so no no he wouldn't a... no he absolutely got... I said, uh, Thomas said to me he's talking about money uh, Thomas stop listening to papers mm. there's no chance of him giving the manager his job. So, a, listen, there were more chance in his job than the, giving it. If you look at the top, say, 10, 12, maybe 20 teams in Europe, Southgate does not get near any of those teams. Take take Kevin Venables out of the equation. Yep. Look at every manager we've had. Mm. Right? Or take the 92 clubs and take all the, take, put all the British English lads in. Mm. And we all play the same way. Yeah. Whether it's a long ball mm. or keeping the ball. Yeah. Because yeah, when yeah. we keep the ball, it's slow, sideways, backwards. Mm. When it's a long ball, when we play the long ball game, it's, there is nothing new about it. There is nothing that you no. say, he's going to turn that. You look at Jack, you look at um, Foden, who I absolutely love. Yeah, I think I, I, right? I do we as well. Jack and Tim, so I love Foden, mm. he's there. Right? You look at him and you think, well, he's capable of changing the game. 100%. And he plays Never looked like right changing the game playing for England. No, not at all, no. John Barnes, world-class player. Mm. Goes for England, doesn't look like changing the game. Absolutely. I, I right? remember Ron Atkinson. Chris Waddle, 
Chris Waddle, mm. absolutely. When he went to play for Marseille, yeah. Chris Waddle was unbelievable. Unplayable. Out of this world. Out of yeah. this world. Fantastic player. World class. Right? And they loved him in Marseille. Mm. Loved him. Yep. Right? He had a good spot in England. And it's plays one, it miss miss two, three. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do, yeah. In, in, and then they say, no, no, it's not, it's not, it's not to do. That's how, that's how much they understand the game. Absolutely, it's inconsistent. I, players are inconsistent because the team's inconsistent. Yeah, of course they are, and the way that the manager sets not the, the players, team up, the team's no. inconsistent. Yeah, because of the way the manager sets the, the team up and tells the players how to play football. I remember, they all play the same way. Yeah. They all play. All the British managers play the same way. I re- the same way. I remember Ron Atkinson telling me. When he went to watch Laurie play for England, after the game, he said, Laurie, why did you play like that? You don't play like that for me. And he said, boss, that's how the gaffers told me to play. And, and you've always maintained that. You're absolutely right, too. As fans, we have not got a clue what goes on. The players are told to play a we certain talk, way, and they play that way. Us, we talk amongst ourselves, the fans. Yeah, of course we do. And you've heard it in pub, you've heard it everywhere else. But we'll say, you know, he's a very play for Germany. He's yeah. a great player for Spain. Yeah. He's a great player for France. Yeah, stick him in the England team, he'll look shit. And then we look <laughs> at we look at his and we think, what what's happened to what's happened to Foden? What's happened to Jack Grealish? And yeah. what's, I mean we talk about Declan mm-hmm. Rice yeah. being uh one of the top midfield players in the world. Again, I have to and stop it, TC. I have to stop Who it. Are these people yeah. kidding? I have never ever seen anything in Declan Rice that I would put him in my team in midfield. I don't rate Declan Rice. I don't rate I don't rate Rice. I've never rated Phillips and I don't rate Bellingham. And we seem to rate the players that I absolutely don't rate. And you know, but either they're right and I'm wrong or I'm right and they're wrong. But players that they eulogize, players that they keep talking up how magnificent they are, I look at them, I think bang average. In my opinion, bang average. TC, the charity shield, it kicks off. It's the curtain raiser traditionally. Went back to Wembley in 1974. And 50 years ago, in the August of 1974, when Leeds United played Liverpool, what what a firing, feisty game that was. It was Brian Clough's first game. What do you think is going to happen? What do you think is going to happen at this one? I know you're asking me. Me, me personally. It'll be, it'll be a friendly game and that's what it'll be. I I think, um, my personal opinion is I think that um, Man City will smash them. I can see it being a, a 3-1 or a 4-0. I think Grealish is going to start. I think Jack will have a tremendous game. I think it's going to be a, a new beginning for him. I think Pep's always done this with players. He's done it with Aguero. He's done it with Bernardo Silva. He's done it with um, Phil Foden. And I think he's done it with Grealish. I think Grealish is going to come back. And I think he's going to really answer his critics and shove it right down their gobs. This And I think it'll start at Wembley on Saturday. He has nothing to prove, though, Gabby. No, he doesn't to, he does, to us. He has nothing to prove. But, but, but to like lots of fans. Lots of fans. You think to yourself, mm-hmm. why, Jack? Just... You know, you're a multi-billionaire, mm. and I'm not saying disrespect your manager, right? Jack always thought that I didn't listen to him. I listened to everything. Yeah. My brain's telling me one thing. Mm. And the other side of my brain's telling me what Jack said to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Mm. But I didn't. I never got dropped because I was playing bad, ever. No? Ever. No? Not at Forest, not at Everton, mm. ever. Ever. Mm. So tell them all that, every one of them. Yeah. Right, I didn't get in because the team were doing well. Yeah, and they were winning. Absolutely, and they didn't change it like they change mm-hmm. it nowadays. No, I mean again, that's the one thing in the game today that has changed. They have got twenty-five in terms of Man City international football players, where you guys had squads of fourteen, maybe sixteen players. And, and there was no rotation. There was far more games being played in your days on it, far heavier pitches. It, it baffles me when everybody, even beat players, talk today. Mm. And they'll turn around and say, well, games that they play now, yeah. pitches are better. The, the diet's better. 
Yeah, 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 absolutely. Right? Mm. Um, the pitch is better, the day is better. The, boot, the, the boots are. As hard. Yeah, the, boot, the, the boots are. The balls are, are lighter. <laughs> I mean, every, everything's conducive to a quicker game of football. But then you players of yesteryear, you were far more fitter than and what they are. And nobody's getting kicked up in air. Absolutely, yeah, there's no jeopardy. It's, a, it's a quite a sterile and boring game compared to what it was in the 70s. And we go back to that charity shield. I mean, what a what a curtain raiser that was. I think Kevin had got one on him. He didn't, didn't he throw a punch or did Johnny Giles throw a punch first? It, it certainly it was a well, round of free kick and Johnny Giles. I watched that game. And when I, when you watch, when I watched that game, yeah. Giles and Giles and, um, Billy, yeah. wound, wound Keegan up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Completely wound him up. Yeah. Uh, I can remember being in in uh, Outlook in Doncaster. Yeah. When King when Keegan walked out of England. Right. Okay. Yeah. No. I, I was with, wasn't it? I was with a teammate called Alan Murray. Yeah. Uh, and we were watching um, Medicine Head. Okay. Yeah. Uh, a little duo called Medicine Head. Right. Um, Revy must have phoned his mum up, Keegan's mum, because he'd walked out and gone up to Doncaster. Mm-hmm. And Boris set is coming to, to nightclub. And um, we were sat with Keegan and uh, me and Alan were sat with Keegan. And then he, uh, Morris came in, said, can, he must have said to him, bye, 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 can you give Revy a ring? And that type of thing. Mm-hmm. Right. So I knew he got that about him where if things are not going his way he's not he's not playing and I don't mean that in a nasty way yeah right because he walked out of Manchester he walked out of um, England so when you're saying he walked out on England went walked out as a player or or when he was the manager well he walked out as a player yes yeah, he walked yeah. out as a player yeah right and he did the same thing as a manager gotcha so yeah Brentham and Giles had wound him up that much yep right get a little having digs at him Mm. Uh, and he retaliated, they both got sent off. Yeah, but he walked out as a player with England. Mm. I don't know what had gone off. But Keegan had uh, always had that fiery. This, this was about this war. It, well, it was when I was at Doncaster, so it's got to be seventy four. Yeah, seventy four. Yeah, the forest in seventy five. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know. Yeah, he was certainly. Was it, you know, Liverpool, Leeds. But you'd say you'd expect Man United, uh, Manchester City to be a fiery game, wouldn't you? You would. Again, going back to the way that it was back in the 70s, every game was, was more competitive. There always seemed to be a little bit more on it. Bit of needle, bit of, you know, amnesty between the players. <laughs> As you said, you, they used to kick you up in the air. So it wasn't so much of a, a gentleman and a, and a friendly game. Even the big games these days, some of them are swapping shirts at half time. No way would you have ever got anything like that in the 70s. And <laughs> in that charity shield, there, there, there was... Uh, the, I mean, it was almost like murder ball at times, wasn't it? The challenges would be going in. They got like so. But Tommy I, don't, Smith. I don't, I don't mind them swapping. I really don't mind swapping shirts. I don't mind what colour boots they wore. I, I wouldn't. No, I don't but, mind but, people but, wearing gloves. But, but not at half time. But it's typical. Listen, I played at Southampton. We played at Reading. Yeah. Middle of January, FA Cup. Yeah. Right. Absolutely bit of free, freezing. Yeah. Not like it is now. Mm-hmm. We used to get bad winters. Yeah. Right, and we got the long sleeve shirt and the short sleeve shirt. Yep. And I put my long sleeve shirt on, mm. and Mick made me something right dig at me mm. for for putting a long sleeve shirt on, because everybody else had got short sleeves on. And, but why does English always do that? Don't know. Don't know. I mean, I'd it be. It baffles I'd, me. I'd, I'd, I'd be having. He's got a pair of white boots, not a pair of pink boots. Yeah. Good. Let them crack on with and it. If they don't play well, what's the first thing to do? Like the Blake boots. Of course they do, yeah. Because he's wore pink boots. Yeah, they'll always find an excuse. A load of rubbish. I know, absolutely, too. Complete rubbish it is. Legends of the 70s, Kevin Hector, who played in the Charity Shield the year after, in 1975, when Derby came to, won the league, they were champions, and um, they played... West Ham United that won the FA Cup. But Kevin Hector, uh, born Kevin James Hector in Leeds 
on the 2nd of November 1944. Started his career at Bradford Park Avenue, 62 to 66, scoring 113 goals in 176 games. Moved to Derby County in 66 of the year. Stayed there for 12 years till 1978. Scored 147 league goals in 430 games. He went over to Vancouver and scored 39 in 63 in the NASL, which is a tremendous return. And to listen to the rest of this podcast, head on over to www.patreon.com forward slash SRB Media. Thank you.